say that the instruction manual is so easy to follow that you don't really need a tutorial. So, as always, thanks for... Actually, I'm only kidding. Now, page 57. Liquid crystal panel. Apparently, the liquid crystal panel has a life of seven years. Well, after seven years, the contrast decreases and the numbers will be hard to read. So basically, you need to return it back to whoever you bought it from and they will replace it for free. I thought that was quite interesting to read. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the crowns. Now, playing around with it, I can actually understand why they have got the anti-clockwise and clockwise, because when you're unscrewing, you're unscrewing towards you. And on this side, you see, I'm going towards me. And when I need to screw them up and tighten them, it's all going away from me. So that makes logic sense. So what do I start off with? Well, because it's solar powered, I thought I would go through the sort of battery side. And just to let you know that it does have a power save. It also has a sleep function. So basically, if nothing's used or pressed for a couple of hours and it's not left in any light source, it will go to a power save and a little icon will appear on this small digital display there. And after three days of not being used, it will go into the sleep and you will either have PS or SL flashing in the dial. Before I go any further, I'm going to call this top button B and this bottom button A, and because in the manual that is how they've described it. Usually when I do G-Shocks, this is button A and so on. So from home screen, we can check the battery level by pressing button B for a few seconds, and in the digital display, it will show bat 10, and 10 meaning it's fully charged. And when it goes to bat zero, everything will stop. So you will need to uh, charge it up. And you can see that it automatically goes back to time. In home time, if you press buttons A and B at the same time, you get to have an alarm test. Also, when you've pressed it, you'll have a little bell icon. And this means that the hourly alarm or the hourly signal is set. Also, it means that it will beep through the functions. And with a higher pitch once you reach the home time. It's pretty much like a G-Shock. To turn this off, you can just push them both together quickly. And now the icon has gone out. So now when I go through the modes, it is in stealth mode. Now in this tutorial, I think I'm gonna have a little bit of tone so at least I can follow what I'm doing. Next, I want to do a hand calibration and I would recommend this. So what you do, you pull the crown out in the only position and then press B. Now remember, this is your adjust button. That's how I'm gonna start to remember. And you press this for a few seconds and then it comes up with S set and the S stands for the second hand. And here you can adjust it. Now you can't go backwards, you can only go forwards. So it's a little time consuming because you have to go all the way around once. But then again, you've only really got to do this the once hopefully. So let's just get that as accurate as possible. Here it comes. So and I'm sure you know what's going to happen next. I push button A and it now goes to M set. Yes, the minute hand. And here, oh, you can go backwards. Oh, that's good. So it's just the second hand that can, ah, oh, it went a bit too quick there. Okay, so I take it if you do a longer turn or a quicker turn, it's very, very pinpoint. So 
let's do this. So I'm all doing this all behind the viewfinder and then when I press it for the third time it's going for the H set, the hour hand. And once you're happy and you're calibrated, just push in the crown and it resorts back to normal running time. In the manual it states that if the battery is fully charged but the functions don't behave normally there is a master reset and so what you do you are in home screen or home time you pull the crown out in the first position and then hold down buttons A and B for at least 10 seconds. Now it's going to reset itself. The screen goes blank. This is all quite normal. And then it goes back to checking the hands. And I've seen that the second hand is actually out of alignment. And then when you're done, you just push the crown in. So just in case anything happens, at least you know how to master reset it. Now with everything reset, I need to uh, set the time and date. So in home screen, just pull the crown out. You've seen this before with the flashing seconds. Now, if you just turn the crown, you know that it goes back to zero. So the time is about 30, seven about 37 so let's see how easy is it to get to 37 and not too bad there you go it takes I think it's gonna take a little bit of more playing around it does have a clicking you feel it clicking on the crown so that's the minutes and now I need to set the hour and that's at 6 p.m. So I'm just going to, there it is, 6 p.m. Done there, so. And then when you press it again, I can adjust today's date. I don't know, if, can you go backwards? Oh, you can go backwards, so that's good. So let's go to the 19th, and then it is the 8th, like so. Then the year is already set, so like so. That's already done. And then I can change, because I found this out from the beginning, that can go to 24, and then it should be the seconds. I'll just leave the seconds for the moment, and then it's just push the crown back in, and then the hands whiz around, like so. Perfect, there it goes, 28, 29, absolutely spot on. Next is the modes, and I just want to point this out, that if you're, say, in the second mode, if you long press on button A, it takes you straight back to home screen. Thought I'd just point that out because it's quite handy. So the first mode would be your date. There so it's coming up with M019, Monday the 19th. And I think this is great because now I could screw down that pusher and now it's blocked. So I now I just have the time and date as my choice. So let's unscrew that and go to the second mode. And the second mode is, this is called local time. Or, so you could use this as a second world time feature. So to adjust this is pretty much like how you would adjust the home time. So you just pull the crown and you have the option to change the hours or the minutes with a press of button uh, A. I'm trying to remember, and that's all you get. And using the crown again, you can advance this. And once you have got that set to so how you like it, just push the crown and it returns back like so. So from a local time or dual time or whatever you want to uh, call it, we have the stopwatch. Now this is just a very simple start stop. There's your start and there's your stop. And I've already played with this, haven't I? Because I worked it out that you just hold it down for a few seconds and you can reset it. 
That is very cool. Now this will count up to 99 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. And once it's completed, it would just stop. So there, stop there. So you can either have it running or you can just long press and that would just reset it. From stopwatch, next is the alarm. So this is basically the same as the other time adjustments. So let's set the time to go off in a moment. So 18, and I'm going to put it on 40, that'll be 47 now. So let's just take that through there. And um, I'd say behind the viewfinder, uh, 45, let's go there, 45, six, seven. So once you push the crown in, you have the alarm icon there. I thought that was to do with the crown that's sticking out, and it's not. That is actually the alarm icon. And you can turn this off and on by pushing uh, button B and uh, A together. Let's get it up right. And you push that together and it turns it off. So once you've set the alarm, it turns it on automatically. Just give you an example. So if I just pulled the crown out, pushed it back in, it turns it on. So let's have a little listen to how loud the alarm is. I think it's going to be quite loud and uh, be interesting because I think this is louder than a G-Shock. Yeah, that's pretty loud. Now that will go off for 10 seconds. You can turn the alarm by pushing any of the pushers, but if you've got them screwed down, then by the time you've unscrewed it, it's a bit pointless. So turning that alarm off, pushing button B and A. Now pushing mode, it goes back to home time. And the last feature, I thought I would test the hourly signal. And that's what it sounds like. So that is everything covered. Now, the big question. Do I recommend this new Arnie Seiko? And I have to say, most definitely. If you like mechanical watches and you like their fiddling, then this has that sort of fiddling side. Um, even though it's all very digital, it is very involving with turning the crown and having those clicks and then turning these crowns and making the pushers go back in. I really, really am liking this more and more and it is so, so comfy on the wrist and it has a great presence. The lug width is perfect. It really is perfect and this will suit much smaller wrists as well. I would like to say a huge thank you to watcho.co dot uk for supplying me this arnie watch no they did not give it to me i bought it fair and square off their website and i also like that they give you that one year extra warranty so making it up to three years so again guys thanks very much and uh we'll keep in contact because i want to visit you again guys uh hopefully in october to film some of your new watches that would be great to see you and also to see your new range and because i've bought this watch you've getting a honest opinion and review on this because this i'm going to keep this watch is really has taken me back to the predator times i think i need to watch that movie again anyway that is the arnie time and as always Thanks for watching. Get down.